come on out to Brown Mountain Bottle Works at 115 East Union Street in Morganton, North Carolina, the place to be for great craft beer. Browse their shelves with hundreds of craft beer selections. Relax and enjoy one of their 12 draft taps. Check them out on the Untapped app for their current draft beer selections and go to their website to see the latest beer offerings and events at www.brownmountainbottleworks.com. We'll see you there. Hi, I'm Glenn, Days Behind the Camera. We're the NC Beer Guys. Welcome to another episode of the NC Beer Buzz. We're continuing our tour around Western North Carolina. We told you as we started this weekend off, we're going to be visiting new breweries and a couple of breweries that we had visited before that had something new to show, like we were just at Bear Waters at the new location. And we're also going to not leave Western North Carolina before we show you a coming soon brewery. We're not quite sure when it's coming soon, but it's coming soon. By the time you see this, it'll be very close to being fruition. So we're here in uh, Silva, <laughs> I forgot where we were, on Main Street with uh, Corey and Lori Bryson, who are going to be the owner proprietors at Balsam Falls Brewing Company, a brand new brewery here. Kind of, if you know Silva, we're in the square block, kind of behind Heightsville Mansion. And, you know, you keep going around and making the U turn on Spring Street, maybe. Is that the U turn? Mm -hmm. And then come down, so they're kind of backed up behind. Dieter's place. It's not close. quite, it's kind of down the road, but you'll find them if you get to Silva by fall. Surely by fall we'll be Absolutely. over. Absolutely. Right, so. right. <laughs> Thanks for having us up. And we know we're kind of posing and rushing things a little bit, but not we're very excited about what's happening. I know you guys must be so excited. We are. We are. Excited. It's been a long process, but uh, it's been fun and certainly a learning experience, and we're looking forward to getting the doors open. So how did we come to do this? You were a brewer, home brewer, who was the brewer? I was a home brewer. Um, started out with a really good home brew club. Um, Locally? Uh, it was actually in Tampa, Florida. Okay. Um, got a great group of people there. Uh, we had a what they call a competition team that met once a month. Uh, we tasted beers, we judged beers, uh, we learned what we were tasting and what the difference was between a good beer and mm -hmm. a bad beer, what faults were there, off flavors, uh, right. off flavors, things like that. And it really made me want to be a better brewer and got me interested in judging beer. And so I got really deep into that, did a lot of judging uh, both uh, homebrew competitions and some of the pro brewing competitions in the state of Florida. Um, <clears throat> And we had some friends that uh, that opened a brewery out of our homebrew club. Okay. It's like, well, okay, that's interesting. So yeah. they did it. They, they did it, and then it's, you know, guys with I guess they no did real background. In Florida? Brewery. In Florida. Okay. In Tampa. Uh-huh. Um, and then, uh, so we started thinking about it. We're like, well, you know, we've been wanting to get back to Silva. This is where my family's from. Oh, so, so. this is kind of home to you. You yeah. happen to be yes. in Florida, but this is home country. Right. This is home to me. My d dad was born and raised here. My grandfather was born and raised in Silva. Um, so, and so my, it's a real homecoming. Yeah, my grandmother was born and raised in Canton, so um, wanted to get back to uh, to this place because I, my dad was in the Navy. I was raised all over the country, uh -huh. um, but I spent every summer here with my grandparents. Right. So it's always home. To so this them. felt like home if any place yep. did. Right. It did. So um, we wanted to get back up here, and we were looking at uh, looking at uh, making that happen, and uh, started uh, investigating opening a brewery. Luckily, we had some friends that had done it and, and made some mistakes, and uh, we can learn from their mistakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we started working on a business plan probably a little bit over three years ago, I guess. And um, uh, worked on it, worked on it, revised it, and uh, revised it some more. Revised it some more, and, uh, and you probably did this morning too. I mean, you, yeah, it's constantly, you're constantly it's revising, a product and, and, and making it what you want it to be, and making it fit into the situation that you find yourself in. You know, um, we didn't have a, tons of money. Uh, we're not independently wealthy or anything like that. Uh, we had to figure out a way to make it happen. As you um, could afford to make it happen. As we could afford right. to make it happen. And taking the advice from our friends and the things that they felt they could have done better. Um, you know, they told us, you know, they wished that they'd uh, gone for an SBA loan or something like that as opposed to getting investors to start off with. Mm -hmm. um, so we started investi investigating that, looking into it. Finally found a, a great organization that uh, was willing to work with us. They liked our uh, 
our business plan, uh, loved our business plan, uh, and wanted to support us. Uh, unfortunately, they were already um, investing in some breweries in the area, so uh, they had to uh, get uh, the sign off from those other breweries to make sure that we wouldn't be competing with them, mm -hmm. uh, which they gladly gave. So. Uh, uh, that allowed us to buy this building and get Great. started. So, and at that point, it started to be the reality. Yeah. But you thought it might be sooner than now, because right. as you got into the old building, mm -hmm. everything presents itself. Correct. Correct. So, uh, once we bought the building, we thought, all right, let's get going. Sure. Uh, get the contractors in here, start ripping the stuff out, and, and make it the way we want it. And then, well, no, can't go quite that fast. You got to do this and this and this and uh, this permit. And this know, get, a, get an this, ar right. architect to draw it out and say this is the way it's going to be done. And and so we ran into a lot of things that uh, that kind of slowed us down going through the process. But uh, um, but you were not breaking new barriers in the sense of the town new beer and new breweries because they had a couple here already successfully. Correct. So at least yes. you weren't knocking down brand new walls in some senses. Right. Correct. And they were welcoming. They were. Very supportive. They were very welcoming. Good, good. Because that's not the case everywhere. I mean, yeah. Some people do brand new towns, they're breaking new ground. Mm -hmm. So at least you had that going for you, maybe. Yeah, and, and towns, we found that towns in this area are really, if they don't have a brewery, they're really hungry to get one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we but still, at, you came here where there were already some instead of going right. anywhere. Or there was not one. We looked at other areas too, you know. So we, that was we, a possibility yeah. at one point. Mm -hmm. Haywood and Jackson County. Okay. Both looking at. I mean, it, my family's from from both counties. Uh, actually, my mother was born and raised in Charlotte, mm -hmm. so um, we're kind of all North North Carolinians. But uh, um, we looked at some other towns, and we were really hesitant to come back to Silva because, well, I was already partial to it anyway. I didn't want that to influence my decision, but uh, in really digging in and looking at the culture in Silva, it had everything that we were looking for as far as the beer culture. Mm -hmm. um, the while tourism is important, um, there is a, a period of the year that's uh, it's very tourist driven. We also have the rest of the year where you've got uh, all the college students. So right. uh, you know, I've, I've heard it said that. Uh, before we open, Silva has the highest number of breweries per capita in the in the state. Okay. Um, after we open, it may be the nation. I don't know. Right. Uh, but Silva has a very small population, but yet it's got a very uh, active uh, beer crowd. Uh, and it will, and it's already an educated craft beer scene. Yes. Yes. You shouldn't spend a, have to spend a lot of time bringing people up to their knowledge of craft beer. There'll be some of that, of course. There'll, there'll probably the be some of The new beer drinkers, the yeah. new college age kids who are just learning. Right. Well, our focus really is on education as much as anything. Even the people that, uh, that have been drinking craft beer for a while may not really know what they're drinking. Um, they may just, oh, I like this kind of beer. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to be that ed educational resource to the community. Okay. Um, we want all of our beer servers to be Cicerone certified knowledgeable. beer servers. Um, we want them to be knowledgeable. We want them to be able to talk about what makes this beer different from that beer mm -hmm. um, so that we can educate our consumers. And what about the beer itself? You got a preference to style? Will there be some kind of signature Boston Falls beer? <laughs> there are going to be some signature beers. Uh, personally, I'm kind of an IPA guy. Okay. I have a good IPA. Um, so they'll be the first uh, ones out of the box? They'll be some of the first ones out of the box. A good IPA, Pale Ale. Uh, we'll have a, probably a rotating double IPA. Um, and we'll have some of the, your, the standard beers that you would expect to see, a Porter Stout. Mm -hmm. um, we'll also uh, have a, a Pilsner. We are going to be doing lagers as well. Okay. Uh, so a Bohemian Pilsner is probably going to be one of our core beers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Belgian Wits is another one of the core beers that we'll have. And then everything else, the rest of our 24 tap uh, handles that we have uh, are going to be filled with uh, either experimental beers, one-off beers, uh, treatments of, uh, of some of our core beers. Uh, we also plan to have rotating uh, kettle sour beers such as a Goza or mm -hmm. Berliners, uh, and probably be doing some uh, fruiting of those as well. Okay. Uh, you know, we 
kind of cut our eye teeth on the beer in Florida and the Florida Weiss is very popular down there. You see them all over the place. Tell me uh, what a Florida Weiss is. A Florida Weiss is, uh, Not a Berliner is basically a fruited Berliner. A fruited Berliner. Yeah. So they'll add mango or they'll add uh, uh, pineapple or uh, cherry or strawberries or mm -hmm. any number of uh, fruits to, uh, to a Berliner and it makes a really light refreshing uh, drink especially for the heat and, mm -hmm. and humidity of, uh, of Florida and uh, so we'd like to we've seen them in a few places here so that's one of the things that we'd like okay. to uh, to introduce and, and uh, talk a little bit more about so. So Lori tell us about what the layout will be inside how's it going to be we can't really show it because it's not there yet, but what's it going to be like inside? Well, um, it's going to be traditional and, and um, comfortable and we're going to have some tables and chairs and um, couches and... Um, 24 taps, did we say? 24 yes. Taps. Okay. So, um... So uh, 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 like a horseshoe bar, round bar, straight bar, what are we hoping for? It's going to be like two L's, yeah. almost. Okay. It's going to be open on one side mm -hmm. and then open in the back, so... And light, uh, white and bright or wood and dark and speakeasy-ish or how would you describe the, de the decor and the ambiance? I would like to say that there would be some light in there. Uh huh. Because um, you will have all this front glass yes. that's yes. darkened down now for obvious reasons. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'd, I'd say it's going to be kind of a, um, it's not going to be real bright. It's not going to be the, the industrial that you see in some places. It's going to be more subdued lighting most of the time. Uh, we do have a lot of wood that's been in, in this space for mm -hmm. uh, 90 years or so. Right. Um, so we want to, to polish uh, up and show off. Polish right. that up, show it off, uh, reuse some of our reclaimed wood uh, from the uh, construction to, uh, to trim out uh, mm -hmm. the bar area and such. Right. And as much as anything, it's going to be uh, a showcase for this local area. Um, lots of pictures of, uh, of Silva throughout history. Great. And uh, some nice. people uh, here locally and just uh, kind of celebrating uh, Jackson County and, and our roots and where we come from. And for those of us who don't know, how about Boston Falls? Where did the name come from and what is it? Is it a real falls out here? Uh, it actually uh, I'm a down Easter, I don't know, um, okay. We, uh, in our research and such, we, we came across so many different breweries that had uh, trademark issues. Innovation. Yeah, of course, right. Yeah. Um, and we wanted a name that we could trademark. And in our research, um, coming up with a fictitious name seemed like a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, so we started looking at, uh, at possible names. Uh, and I had read an article about uh, Dills Falls, which used to be inside the city limits of Silva. Um, and it was, at the time, I think the only municipality in the country that had an active waterfall okay. within the city limits. Right. When they put uh, the expressway through back in the early 70s, they destroyed the falls. Mm -hmm. And um, so I read about that and, uh, and I really wanted to kind of give an, an homage to that and say, you know, this is, is part of our history. Let's, right. let's, let's celebrate this. And we looked at some different names. And, and, and of course, and, uh, Balsam very much is a Western North Carolina yeah, name. Balsam I mean, is very much it. Western North Carolina. Um, and you know, our, we've got the Balsam Mountain Range and uh, the Spruce Fir Forest that, uh, that line the tops uh -huh. of, the, of the mountains, uh, which are, you know, the He Balsam and She Balsam. So it sounds like a real falls. place. So, it sounds like a real falls. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a real falls, but it's really um, gives a, a sense of the area. So Great, great. Well, it's, we're so excited to come back in the fall and see how it's going to go. I know you we're guys can't hardly wait to get your doors yes. open. Yes. Of course, it's been a while in coming. <laughs> Thanks yep. so much for having us in and letting us show a little preview of what it's going to be. Thank well, you thank very you. much. So when you guys get back out to Silva next time, by the time you get here next time after you see this video, they'll be open. Stop in and say hello to these guys. And remember as always from the NC Beer Guys, drink local, keep your beer dollars in North Carolina.